One of our reading leaders for January is O.K. Enelema, who is the CEO of African Capital Alliance. O.K. is one of the most distinguished and respected professionals in Nigeria's private sector. He is the author of Apostles of Righteousness in the Marketplace. Is it possible to live right and yet succeed in Nigeria's marketplace? Or must you compromise on your values and principles before you can succeed in a corrupt business environment? These and other questions are answered in O.K.'s book. He joined us to review his own book, discuss his favorite books, and how reading has been essential to his professional career. Enjoy the interview. Thank you, Mr. Enelema, for joining us on the Channels Book Club. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure having you. Thank you. Um, before we go into your book, um, which I find very interesting, uh, let's talk a bit about you so that um, viewers can know the author. Uh, um, a particular thing I find interesting in your story is how you started out as a medical doctor, and then you went into um, finance and money matters and today you are one of the most respected voices um, in, in that area so how did you make the transition and why did you make that transition well thanks um, <coughs> I mean casting my mind back I mean first of all to put it in context I qualified as a medical doctor I think it was in 1985 that's um, close to I guess 29 years ago um, I was fortunate in the sense that I went to medical school straight from secondary school at a very young age and I went to medical school because it was something that looked um, like the right profession, just sounded like the right profession, felt like it. Um, but once I went there, I felt, even while I was in school, that I wasn't really called to be a doctor. If you ask me how I knew, I can't quite tell you, but I believe that people are called into you know, uh, professions, professions and purposes. Mm. Uh, but the good news is that it is by the grace of God that I actually made that move. I mean, I, I basically had an encounter that helped me in 1988, which is when I um, f began the process of changing my career to business. And that started with joining Arthur Anderson, where I then qualified as an accountant. I spent about four years with them, worked for them in Lagos, as well as in the UK. I then, as you know, went on from there to Harvard Business School, where I did my MBA. And um, eventually I got into the field I'm in now, which is investment management, private equity to be precise. Mm. So I'm sure you advocate for people finding their true callings. I do. A, a lot. I'm, I'm sure you, you spoke I about do, that. I do, but it's a time. process, but I do, I do advocate that, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, how does a busy chief executive like yourself find time to read? Maybe I'm assuming. Do you, f do you find time to read? And if you do, how, how, do, you, how do you make that happen? Um, I do find time to read. Reading actually is one of my... <coughs> Should I say one of my most important hobbies, or if you call it a hobby, or one of the most important pastimes I have? I love reading. I think um, <clears throat> I find it very inspiring. I find it very encouraging and very enlightening. So, first of all, I travel a lot. So I, I read when I travel. I also read when I'm at home, but I read even more when I'm on the road. Um, you know, uh, the thing about books is that when you fall in love with books, you find that you know it's it's um, it's very engaging. You know, and frankly, it's really helped me to develop over time, and that's something I encourage everybody to do. So, so what do you read? I have read. I mean, the, the thing about reading, if you read as widely as I've, I've tried to, then you read. You find yourself reading um, quite a bit. So, I've read things that um, bother on, you know, sort of personal development. One of the most important books I've read, I'm sure it won't come as a surprise, is Stephen Covey's book on Seven Habits Every, of Highly Effective is People. Low. Everybody's mentioned it because it's a classic. It's a classic. <laughs> it's a book that is. Um, it's, you know, it's a very good book in terms of personal development. You know, I have also read books on business. Um, I like Jim Collins. Jim Collins writes a lot on, you know, business and excellence and, and greatness, right? Is that the man who wrote um, From Good to Great? Yeah, who wrote Good to Great. Good to Great. And also wrote Great by Choice. He was also the one that wrote Built to Last before then with a co-author. Yeah. And, you know, he's written a bunch of other very good books. He's a very sound thinker in my view. I found his books to be sound, and they agree with me. The thing about books is that you tend to enjoy them when they agree with you more. So mm. one could actually say that like, when we read, we tend to identify with the authors 
that makes sense to us, if you know what I mean. Mm. Um, I've also read books about people who write more, more, you know, sort of um, general interest books. Um, Malcolm Gladwell, Outliers. Mm. Outliers. You know, I love, you know, I love books that encourage people to reach their full potential. Mm. Um, you know, I've read books on Christianity, given my faith and my and my deep interest in the faith. You know, one of the books I've read that I like is a book on hearing God, just having a walk with God by a gentleman called Dallas Willard. Of course, I read a lot of materials that are sort of daily devotionals from Pastor Deboya, from Bob Gass, um, and all sorts, really. Um, I, I love reading. So basically, um, you spend most of your reading time reading books that develop you, that develop or, 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 rather than reading for pleasure. Is that correct? And I don't think it's either or. So the things that give me pleasure are the things that develop me and the things that challenge me to be a better person and challenge me to be more effective in encouraging other people to be, you know, to reach their full potential. By the way, one group I should have mentioned is that I also read on investment management. And by far, um, the, the person I like to read things written on him is Warren Buffett because I agree yeah. with his investment style. You know, which, as you know, um, has been uh, has been a very, a very. He's been a great success, been a very successful investor, and so one of the books I've read recently, which I like, is a book called "The Enduring Value of Values." Mm. You know, uh, Berkshire Beyond Buffett. It was written by a gentleman called Mr. Cunningham or Dr. Cunningham or Professor Cunningham. He's actually a professor, mm -hmm. and so I just wanted to mention that because that's a big piece of my interest, investment management. L leaders are readers. Is that true? Do you agree with that? I agree with that, but you almost have to break it down. In order to influence people, which is what leadership is about, reading is a major part. You know, I, I'm, I'm a great believer in changing and shaping your perspective over time. People are what they read, because what you read influences how you see the world. Yeah. And the people who are most effective at influencing others do have an appetite for reading and developing their own perspective, their own outlook of the world. Mm. And therefore, I'm not surprised to hear a statement like leaders are readers. Mm. Now, 